the DFA's statement in early March more or less implied that there was such a proposal and it was contrary to our national interest, as they put it explicitly. So DFA is washing off its hands. So it looks like no uh, official organ was involved, but some people may have been involved, regardless of what Salvador Panel and, or some extremely credible people are saying out there. Yeah, you're right. Uh, the DFA uh, disclosed that uh, there were proposals by China, but they the DFA rejected it because it would violate the Constitution. It would be against the arbitral award. Uh, but maybe what uh, Senator Rizzo and Tevere is doing is the right thing because uh, under existing law, treason can be committed only during wartime. And, uh, uh, and this is really, if Duterte did it during wartime, this is treason. He, he can be executed for treason if we have a penalty for uh, 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 execution for treason. But uh, I think uh, what Riza should do is to uh, uh, to conduct the investigation in aid of legislation so that we will have legislation in place uh, during peacetime. Because during wartime, if a person uh, uh, commits a treasonous act, that's governed by the revised penal code. But there is no equivalent uh, law during peacetime. The nearest law is uh, when you are disloyal to the Republic. Uh, that's uh, considered a, a violation of the uh, uh, the code of conduct of government officials. But the penalty there is dismissal from office. <laughs> so it's not the, I think the, the, the penalty is to, 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 to light. And of course, if you are in office, you can be, uh, uh, impeach if it's a culpable violation of the constitution and you are an impeachable officer. But uh, he, he, the president controls Congress so nobody would file exactly what happened during the time of the third. So we should have a law saying that if you commit a treasonous act, the same treasonous act uh, during peacetime, then you will be subject to a penalty also, uh, which will be probably lighter during peacetime if it is committed right. than in wartime. But the I think there is a gap in the law because if it is a crime during peacetime during wartime, it should also be a crime during peacetime because it uh, it injures the national interest. So that should be the uh, that should be the direction of the inquiry. That's in aid of legislation because uh, you are thinking of new legislation. Uh, that will apply during peacetime because there's a, a gap, a hiatus in the law. Yeah, it, it, thank you, Justice, for pointing that out. Um, um, I mean, for, for, why do you think we have such a gap? I mean, isn't it like commonsensical that, you know, treasonous acts could happen in a non-war situation, but in still very, very fragile situations that could, it could you know, lead to war? I mean, the United States had all sorts of different legislations during the Cold War period whereby you're not on a direct war with the Soviet Union, but, you know, potentially uh, disastrous, uh, you know, actions by American officials that could com completely undermine um, their national security. I mean, obviously, if you watch the movie Oppenheimer, you would have criticism because it was used to, you know, to, to uh, uh, you know, to red tag, essentially. You no, know? um, but but nevertheless, um, uh, in 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 democracies today, in mature democracies today, do we have any kind of a legal blueprint that we can draw on? Yes, the U.S., uh, U.K., and other uh, democracies in uh, EU, they all have laws, uh, even during peacetime, because they had this, uh, uh, during the Cold War, a lot of their uh, government officials and uh, uh, and citizens were recruited by the KGB. And uh, so they developed that. Uh, the, they had to... Uh, to promulgate laws to counter the the communist recruitment, the KGB recruitment, but we did not have that kind of uh, experience. Uh, we just copied the our present revised penal code is copied uh, uh, almost verbatim from the revised penal code of Spain, and uh, it's very old law, and uh, uh, and uh, and that's it. In the in the case of a uh, uh, of uh, of uh, treason, it applied only during wartime. So we have to update. That's why uh, I'm hoping that this uh, le legislative inquiry of uh, 
uh, Santa Risa will move in that direction, that there is really a gap. There's a black hole in our legal system. And we, we should, because uh, it's not only Duterte, you have a lot of Filipinos now who are mouthing Ch Ch Chinese propaganda because they're paid by China. Uh, the uh, We have a law already, we copied it. Uh, it was uh, uh, enacted uh, during the time of uh, Marcos, during martial law. It's like all, uh, all uh, those who are lobbyists for a foreign country, paid lobbyists, must register. But that, that, that's uh, only for purposes of registration. So you will disclose your yeah. Yeah, transparency. But we really need something because we may have some military officers who will be uh, recruited by by China during peacetime. That's the problem. Uh, or civilian. If you are a military officer, you will be governed by the uh, military uh, rules. You can be subjected to court martial. But for civilians... There is that uh, very weak provision in the code of conduct for government employees. Yes, it's a violation, but the, this penalty is just dismissal from uh, from government office. Uh, Justice, I mean, doesn't that uh, kind of reflect some fundamental weaknesses and sense of complacency of Filipinos? I mean, in in different episodes with you and and other people are uh, in the know, but the things are West Philippines. See, we discuss a lot about national defense, AFP, external security. But I'm, I'm but it, I find it quite surprising that you know we also have all of these serious gaps domestically also in terms of our legislation. I mean, in in major masipag naman mga abogado natin. It's not like we were a country shy of making legislations. Um, I I don't want to be too speculative, but I'm half shocked at the fact that all of these decades, you no, know, we we did not um try to take care of some of this basic things. Um, is it because we were too reliant on the United States around, throughout the Cold War period and, and we are still trying to find our own footing? I mean, what's going on there? Well, uh, yes, uh, I think we we have that gap in the law. Uh, and uh, we have been very cavalier. In fact, uh, you remember President Duterte, he allowed uh, uh, DITO, which is practically financed by China Tel, a China, Chinese state-owned company, to install their towers in all our military camps. Can you just imagine that? Uh, uh, Chinese uh, uh, receivers, transceivers will be installed in our military camps, so they will all collect all the communications of our military. And, uh, you know, to the credit of our military, they, they refuse to implement it. They couldn't, of course, uh, say no directly to the commander-in-chief, President Duterte, but they just delayed and now they're not implementing it But because they know. But, of course, uh, I was uh, I wrote about it and, uh, the, the of course, uh, the like General Esperon, who was head of the NSA at the time, they all defended Duterte, but the people on the ground uh, knew that the... the the injury that could be caused, so they just refused to implement it, while the uh, their superiors who, uh, paid lip service to it, but they did not. They all of them really didn't want to implement it, and uh, luckily, uh, not they did not a single tower was installed. Uh, but that's the we, we. I think we need really a all of nation approach on national security uh, that. Uh, we should be conscious. Right now, uh, uh, we 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 allowed uh, in the draft of the amended Public Service Act that the thirty proposed to Congress, he wanted the uh, our tele telecom company can be hundred percent owned by China by uh, by foreigners, and he said I will give the third telco to China, China Tel. Can you just imagine that? And uh, so what happened here was uh, we all worked to stop it to or to to create poison pills. The what happened was the uh, intelligence uh, service of the uh, armed forces proposed to Congress to put their subject to national security. Uh, the president can decide uh, not to implement this law allowing foreigners to own hundred percent of our telecom if. It infringes our national security, so that's one layer. And the other, the other 
the telcos uh, globe and the pldt suggested to congress that yes uh, foreigners can 100 but not state-owned enterprises because the chinese uh, telecom companies are state-owned so they were able to insert that and i myself because i was worried i worked that i suggested to some congressmen that to put their subject to reciprocity because if we allow China to own 100% of our telecom company, China should also allow us. But in China, foreigners cannot own a majority of a telecom company because they know a telecom company is essential to national security. You cannot allow foreigners to own your telecom company, especially under Chinese law. All Chinese citizens and companies, wherever they are in the world, are obliged to turn over to China to the Chinese uh, security agencies, any data that they that is in their possession. So if they establish a, a telecom tower in a, in Camp Aguinaldo, and they get all those uh, uh, communications of our general headquarters, uh, the Chinese who operate the DITO will uh, will be forced to turn over the. Uh, the data to Chinese uh, security agencies. So th there are three layers now that uh, prevent uh, the China Tel from gaining uh, majority control of uh, DITO because first, uh, if you're a state-owned company, you cannot uh, uh, own a majority of uh, Philippine telecom companies. Second, uh, the, the president, uh, for reasons of national security, can pre prohibit. And third, it must be subject to reciprocity. And China will never open up their telecom industry to foreign uh, ownership, foreign control, because for them, uh, they cannot. The, the essence of the Communist Party, their total control, is uh, uh, control of communications. They, they, they cannot allow people to talk freely. That's why they even have a firewall for the internet. They, they, they have complete surveillance and uh, they intrude into your privacy. That's the way to control society under a communist regime. So for them, uh, the telecom, in, com, telecom companies are very important, critical for control, for controlling society. And they will never allow uh, uh, foreigners to to control or manage their telecom industries so they will they, that uh, they cannot comply with that condition subject to reciprocity i mean i, I would say uh, justice that even some of their supposed private companies their being private is questionable right i mean considering mm -hmm. how in china the government just can come in and take over the company or has essentially you know versions of uh, commissars in the board of governors, I mean, there are so many levers that the Chinese government uh, uses and can use to essentially force Chinese companies, even privately owned companies, uh, to toe the line, right? I mean, I think Huawei, last time I checked, is a private company, but I think no one in any mature democracy would assume that Huawei is not being influenced by the Chinese government one way or another, considering how much subsidies and how much direct legal and political control uh, the Chinese Communist Party has over practically everything in China, right? I mean, so, so in, in that case, doesn't this mean that we have to be careful with any kind of deal with any major Chinese company as far as our critical infrastructure is concerned, which also raises the issue of national greed, right? Because yes, it's not Very only the correct. ownership, right? It's also the maintenance, the engineering. I mean, I think, uh, again, a number of senators, including Senator Ontiveros, back in the day, uh, Miriam Defensor, and more recently also Rafi Tulfa have raised issues about you know, essentially Chinese engineers running the show in some of this company, uh, I mean, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the grid sector, uh, for instance, I mean, so should we do something more drastic here, essentially renationalize some of the sectors or come up with very explicit national security papers uh, uh, with respect to China? Well, on the national grid, I think we have to renationalize it. We cannot, you know, the, the Chinese are the one running the grid, they're technicians, uh, there was a time when they they removed all the Filipino technicians, and the the, the ESAP complained. The Intelligence Service of the Armed Forces of the Philippines complained. So I I don't know if they they were brought back, but control over that uh, uh, 
over the technical matters uh, under the national grid is in the hands of the Chinese, and and they deny that uh, it can be shut down from China. And I, but I believe it can be shut down by China because these are all uh, done electronically and through uh, in the the internet. Uh, we 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 can we can open uh, our if you have a house abroad, you can open it from here through the internet. You can start your car in New York from here through the internet. So you can shut down uh, the grid from uh, from Beijing. It's as simple as that now. So we have to be very careful about this because China wants to grab our, our maritime zones and island territories in the West Philippine Sea. And, uh, and uh, we have to be uh, conscious of that, that uh, how how can we fight China if they can shut down our national grid? That's why the Americans in their ad sites, they put up their own generator. They do. They will not rely on the national grid. That's how critical it is. Uh, even our all our camps should have their own generator because in case of a conflict in the West Philippine Sea, China will just switch switch off the national grid and all our camps will go dark. So again, the last time we check, um, this is from the Arroyo to Aquino era, right? This uh, the the Chinese uh, in, involved. Yes, that happened. The privatization happened during the Arroyo, Arroyo administration. Uh, administration. But you know, national grid is like printing money because uh, the 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 everybody has to pass through the national grid. All the power. If you put up a plant in Quezon, Pabilao. It has to pass through the national grid because the power is delivered in Metro Manila. So it's like a tollway. It, it, the transport will not move unless you pass through the tollway. And there will be no electricity in Manila without that uh, national grid. So it's really, and and it will always be profitable. There, there's no way a national grid can lose money because you just add on to the, uh, you just charge. And everybody needs it. Right. I don't know why it was privatized when uh, it's so critical for national security. And there's no way it was not losing money. Uh, it should not lose money by definition. If it was losing money, then there's a lot of corruption there. I mean, uh, uh, just as I don't want to be self deprecating too much, but para on the things, the is para mejo, banana republic. I mean, there's so many safeguards basic safeguards you would assume in any serious democracy or nation states that it looks like they're they're really missing in the case of the Philippines. And honestly, I mean, Duterte being a lawyer himself, I'm not necessarily the best lawyer, but being the lawyer himself perhaps was aware of a lot of these gaps uh, in the system that he exploited on many fronts, um, particularly also due to the West Philippines issue. Is that also your understanding? Yes, uh, he knew what he was doing, but he did it. That means it was intentional. When he said, do not patrol the EZ, just patrol up to our territorial sea. He knew the consequences. That means China will grab our EEZ. Nobody will oppose China. But he did it willingly because he wanted to do it as a favor for China. It was against their national interest. That's you know, that's why I said in wartime that will be treason. But in uh, uh, peacetime, that's culpable violation of the constitution. He's an impeachable officer. But you need Congress to impeach him. And Everyone in Congress will not do it. Why? Because you know, you know why all the congressmen are under the thumb of the president because of the pork barrel. The Supreme Court before uh, Congress had the when they passed the General Appropriations Act, there would be a line there that the congressman can recommend where the uh, public works will be placed in their district, but the Supreme Court ruled. That is unconstitutional because uh, Congress can only legislate. It cannot implement. That is an executive function. So now, uh, but Congress, the congressmen still want their pork barrel. So they put the entire amount of the pork barrel in the Department of Public Works. And it's given entirely up to the president to dis distribute it. So you have to now count out to the president to get your uh your uh your uh, pork barrel because uh you cannot recommend anymore 
And so the president, Duterte said, okay, I will give you your pork barrel, but I'll put here four later release. Remember that four later release. When will it be released? After you have passed the bill allowing uh, uh, foreigners to own telco. Because I want the China tel to be the third telco. I will also release it if you cancel the ABS-CBN franchise. So it was used in the hands of a president with that mentality. You, you can you can see what what will happen. But, but not, in the hands of a not president, not to mention like, the narco politician list. You know, I mean, he could also put you on the list of narco po politicians, which is even yes. worse, right? So, uh, in the, the you know the presidency is something that's really uh, you just have to put a decent man there. Somebody who's after the national interest. In the hands of a president like Mark uh, uh, Fidel Ramos or Ninoy Pinoy Aquino, then you can, you know, these are decent people. They they will not do something like that. But the hands, well, in the hands of a Marcos Senior or in the hands of a Duterte, it's terrible because they don't care. They will just, if they want to 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 give up or, or, or they want to... China to come in and control our telecom, they will do it through this pork barrel because they control Congress through the pork barrel. And the, the, if they want to, to punish ABS-CBN or any other uh, broadcast company, they can do it. They will tell the congressmen, do not renew the franchise. Otherwise, you will not get your budget. So everybody lined up to vote against the renewal of the franchise of ABC. But that was the tool that was used. Yeah, so that's where we see the like, I, I think presidential bandwagon system na sinasabi, no? and it's so easy to bandwagon around the president or, for, or the president has many whips, right? Uh, to, to leverage in order to essentially neutralize uh, checks and balance. I mean, obviously we saw that also most dramatically dun sa issue ng EJK at saka drug war ni Digong. So, Unfortunately, nagsabay-sabay lahat ng mga buso na yan. Uh, but Justice, before going back again to this issue ng Ayung and Shoal uh, and the implications of the so-called gentleman's agreement, I, I want to also ask, uh, aren't we concerned that if ever we pass laws on, on treason um, or we update our existing uh, legal frameworks, that will also open it up to serious politicization, right? That every administration will come in and open up treason cases against the previous one. Uh, I mean, you but can... I mean, you can imagine that would have been the case against, I don't know, Aquino administration back in the day or, you know, or intervention by Senator Trillianis on the scar partial issue, among others. I see already in the comment section some of the pro yeah. the people here saying, oh, what about this? What about that? I mean, how do we also safeguard against that possibility yeah. of very immature politicians yeah. weaponizing this? It will be subject to abuse by a president like Duterte. Like Duterte, what he did was he canceled the amnesty of Trillianis. And today, the, there's an announcement in the newspaper that the Supreme Court voided, declared it unconstitutional. So there is, you know, it's very important that we elect a decent president uh, because the, the, we have given so much power to the pres to the to the office of the president because those powers are needed. But in the hands of a of a of a president who has no morals, who who, who does not have the interest of the nation in his art, then we, we, we will see these things happen. <laughs> Giving away our exclusive economic zone. For me, that's really, uh, that's that's the height of, a, of a, you know, disregard for the national interest. I mean... I mean, some would say treason. <laughs> but, but then again, we don't even have a serious law on that. Yeah, there is no time. law. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's really a culpable violation of the Constitution. And Congress is supposed to check that. But since they are under the thumb, because of the for later release funds, they cannot do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um that, that, that's the that's the dynamics there. And that's why I think uh, we have to do something about it because this will this will really be a big problem for us. Uh, uh the, the, this will uh, magnify later on into other problems uh, unless we put a check on this. Yeah, and so it's therefore it's uh, important for Senator Rizon Tiveras and others to really in aid of legislation, no, not just for political investigation or anything like that, to do something about it so that we can move forward. Um, the, the, the problem though is, hindi ba dapat committee ng national defense or 
foreign affairs. I mean, foreign affairs is under IME, national defense is under Jingoy. Um, what about, I mean, we also have that dynamic in the Senate, right? Yeah, well, I, I don't know in what committee uh, it will be uh, sent, no? Uh, I think that's uh, the call of the uh, the Senate president and the majority. Uh, they, they want to give it to another committee. Uh, but they, I suppose it will uh, go to the national defense probably. Yeah, which is, uh, I think, Jingo. Or, or it could go to the committee yeah. of... Uh, of uh, Senator uh, Padilla, who is uh, chairs the committee on uh, revision of laws. Ayan, okay, of course, our uh, resident constitutional expert, right? Yes, um, uh, <laughs> uh, it, can, it can go to that. Uh, well, it should go properly to the committee on the revision of laws, committee on the revision of laws, and that will be under and constitutional uh, amendments. Senator yeah, yeah. Ruby, Robin yeah. Padilla. Yeah, Robin Hood Padilla, apparently. Yeah, the... Robin Hood, that's the correct. Okay. <laughs> that's the, that's the, that's well, the uh, real name. I mean, otherwise, you still have the options of, I don't know, Committee Nibato or Cayetano. I think Cayetano also chairs the committee. I mean, wouldn't we expect Senator Cayetano to be a little bit more vocal about uh, this issue, considering he was the Foreign Affairs Secretary during whose time, allegedly, this kind of gentleman's agreement at least came up, if not uh, agreed upon, Per uh per per Harry Rock. I mean, why would even Harry Rock make up stuff like that? I mean, I don't think it serves his 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 interest unless this is about you know pleasing some people on the other side. <laughs> you know, what's going on here? I, I mean, I don't know what the, what committee chairs, but in the case of the uh, uh charter change, uh, you know, charter change would fall under the committee of Senator Robin Hood Padilla because it's, it's a revision of it's a committee on constitutional law and revision of laws. Uh, but they made they created the Senate the the Senate of the president the Senate president created as a 